Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottedon from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 258, and I wanted to talk to you about a challenging situation that I found myself in yesterday. But first, let me explain a little bit of backstory. I love Jesus, and I love church. As such, I sit in the front pew of our church for two reasons. Number one, it forces me to pay attention. By the way, that's a strategy I used in college also. And no one ever takes my pew because who's gonna sit in the front pew? No one but me and my family. So because I'm a photographer and I love Jesus and sit in the front pew, when someone gets baptized in church, usually it's infant baptism is what we do, but not always, other ages get baptized as well. I usually take my camera so that I can take some photos. So I sit in the front pew and this is what I take with me. I take my 70 to 200 Tamron, thank you Aunt Cynthia, and my Nikon D750. I am not gonna use a flash during the service, so obviously I'm just working with the available light. Well, the way our church is set up is we have a huge stained glass window behind the pulpit. So you get a lot of backlighting and the church itself is just poorly lit. It's just dim. It's like any other church in Pittsburgh, many of which remind me of caverns or caves. <laughs> it's not that bad, but it is a challenging lighting situation. But I angle myself a certain way. Okay, I photograph all of these baptisms. So yesterday we had a baptism and it was really exciting because we have this wonderful family in our church who they adopted two siblings. Um, I don't remember several years ago and then they just adopted three more siblings three boys so the first is a boy and a girl and now they have three more boys okay yeah they're crazy they are the most awesome people you will ever ever meet so i'm photographing this baptism all is well no problem and then after church she asked me if i would take a big family group photo and i thought uh oh of course i would love to take a big family group photo but looky here i have my 70 to 200 and no flash and there is a huge stained glass window that's backlit it's a little bit dreary of a day so it's dark 70 to 200 in a church with no flash this is not a good situation to be in. So Craig was liturgist. Actually, Craig is liturgist. Craig, my husband, is a liturgist the whole month of February. So if you want to come worship Jesus and have something really good to look at, then Mount Pleasant is the place to be. It's irrelevant. But so I said to him, hey, I'm going to grab this group photo of their family, but I don't have a flash. I guess we're about to see what I'm made of, huh? This is a really challenging environment. So I said to my friend, happy to take this picture for you. Um, I don't have a flash with me, so I'll just do the best that I can. And she was like, oh, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> so I assemble this group and I move way back in the sanctuary because all I have is a 70 to 200. I move way back and I'm at 70 millimeters. So I'm as wide as I can be on this lens. This is a full frame camera. So if you shot, you kind of have maybe have a gauge for what I'm talking about, but it's dark. And it's a big group of people. This group of people, I want to say I was three or four people deep, which means oh, I would at least want 5.6, maybe f6.3 to be safe. But I had to do what I had to do. So I shot it at f5.6. I focused on the middle row. I'm pretty sure I was four people deep. And if you're watching this on Facebook, then I'm going to post the images below, the before and after, so you can see. So I focused on the middle row at 5.6, but in order to get 5.6, I had to shoot at ISO 5000, and my shutter speed, I believe, was 1 one twenty fifth of a second, maybe 1 one hundredth of a second. And I got the photo, I got the photo. All right, are these ideal lighting conditions? Does the photo look good? No, of course not. But here's what I've learned in many years of photography, that a photo is better than not having a photo. And I would rather take that photo for her that is just okay than not have a photo at all. That's first. Secondarily, you need to remember when you just need to capture a moment. I'm not gonna win any awards with this photograph. It's not anything special to look at. I mean, it's a group photo. Think of uh, family formal at the altar at a wedding, uh, which I can do all day long in my sleep. I'm an expert in that area, but I usually have three lights on those shots and I had none. 
and I just had to make it work. So I'm reminded of this when I work with a lot of clients who think that every photo they take needs to be amazing or needs to come out of the camera or even out of Photoshop looking like a piece of art. And that's simply not true. You have to know when you just need to take photos that are important to capture for the sake of legacy so that you have them. And then when you are maybe being artistic and how you interpret a scene or deliver those images. And I would say that, I don't know, primarily you would be weighted more towards images that you take just to take, just to have a photo. And that having artistic photos are not going to be as often and it's not going to be every image. Every image is not award winning. In fact, 98% of them will never be. They're just good quality photos that you take. Now, I'm sure that this family will be extremely happy to have a photo that is sharp, in focus, edited cleanly, it's not the best lit, but it looks great black and white. And if you if they enlarge it to maybe 11 by 14 or even larger on their wall in black and white, I think it will look beautiful. So I just wanna encourage you to not beat yourself up when taking photos that you just need to take. You just need to take good, clean photos. They need to be sharp and in focus and edited well, that you're not always going to produce amazing art. If you get, if you're shooting a session of a family outdoors and you get one photo that you feel is really artistic or amazing, then I think that's great. But most of the time, you're just taking photos to document something. So unless your job is about creating beautiful landscapes, you know my friend Manny, Emmanuel Panagiotatis, him and I go way, way back. He takes amazing art, beautiful landscape photography. Every photo he takes is perfect and it's art. He's also extraordinarily patient and spends a significant amount of time studying and setting up for a particular photo. And it's one photo and it's amazing. As portrait and wedding photographers, it's a completely different approach. You're taking photos of people to document. And then if you happen to be able to set something up that's artistic and beautiful and amazing, then amen, hallelujah. Hey, come visit me at church this month with Craig up there as liturgist. I'm gonna post this image below. I'll see you in the next video.